Welcome, this great day that the Lord has made. And I trust you're rejoicing and you are glad. Uh, if you are lying down, sit up. If you are still in your pot or you're shining your shoes or whatever you're doing, try to be in a comfortable position because I know you are at lib in terms of your viewing. But it's good to, to meet with you even in this virtual platform. And I know that you have to get accustomed of hearing a, the voice coming from a system rather from a pulpit. But alas, according to Psalm 90, the word of the Lord goes forth and it's, the song goes out throughout the earth. It didn't really say just speaking. I mean, we have the context of Jesus Christ preaching on the mountain to thousands and Peter speaking and Paul without a mic, but these days, you know, we need the amplification and we need this wrong song, but make yourself adaptable to these environments because it is the day the Lord has made and I want you to rejoice. And on this day as we celebrate fathers, as we celebrate that global context, I mean, for, for us in this part of the, the, the Caribbean, because I know Father's Day in other parts of the world, I remember my son ringing me once, somewhere in May, some years ago when he was in New Zealand and said, Happy Father's Day, I said. He said, yeah, 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 we are, we are much earlier. So, but for us down here, we like the third Sunday in June. And so I want to share with you some, some dynamics in terms of how we sh ought to think of ourselves as fathers and also understanding we are fathers because we have children. If you were if you're married with no children, you just stay husband. But the children are important for you to be called father. And so I think it's important to find a relationship between the children and the father so that we can appreciate the dynamics of behavior and responsibility, and how I do it, how I don't do it. And I know sometimes because we didn't go to father school, we want we didn't even go to parent school. We have all kinds of concepts from granny, from auntie, from mommy, the neighbor, and everything about what we have is right because that's who I am, the man of the house, oh, sorry, I'm just the father. So you have heard the scripture from Matthew 6, and you must be wondering, oh, okay, as a matter of fact, you heard it twice already because in the scripture reading, and then our sister who prayed, um, she also mentioned the what I call kingdom prayer, the our father who art in heaven. And so you hear up again, our father uh, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debtors as we forgive those who also have debt with us. So our father, I think it's important for us to realize that there is a plural context here. And I know that you may have one child or you may say I'm a single, you know, single one, but the fatherhood is never about that child alone that you have. Because father doesn't count with a number of children. Father counts with children 
uh, that makes you into context or rather in a place of responsibility. So therefore, there is a belonging, our, that possessive pronoun, our. So somebody belongs to you and you belong to somebody that makes you get that word father. We realize in, from Genesis chapter 1 uh, where God created the man and the woman and he became, as you see in chapter 2, a father to Adam. And you realize that he then established a wife and they became parents and he also became, that is Adam, a father. So that there is that context even as for, for now in Christ Jesus, we have God Jehovah as father to us all. So that even for me, even I may have my five children, but yet I'm a father to many. And so much so, I have to remember that they all are looking at this one man. So it's not about the Niles. It's not that they're different. I have to be father. So whether it's the Johns, the Rampkissoons, the Harry Lals, the I am father. So I am not going to change my personality and my behavior because that's not my blood born or that is not my wife child. No, I am the father. I have to behave. I have to be responsible because God is not trying to see who is a Jew and who is a Greek and who is a Gentile. No, there's neither Jew or Greek, there's bond or free. He is just father of us all. And we can read that in Ephesians chapter 4. He's father of us all. And I think if we come back to that understanding, it is important for us to realize that in the past, when I was a little guy growing up, I understood that the village raised the child. Because everybody around that village was your father. Come, go, don't go. And when they go home to your real father, they say, Mr. Percy, I see a boy down the road. And you know I get in licks because somebody has seen me down the road. But today we have become so individualized that we have forgotten that context of our father. So I, I want to bring that back to you. That we, we, and I think it's going to make us more of a, more of a man to have that responsibility wherever we go. So when we come out of our house, we are father. When we go to work, we have that context so that we are able to help the teenagers, the young people, the elderly ones. Wherever we go, we are an example. And that brings me into that place of who, who art in heaven. There's a location. There's a home, yes. But how do we recognize that home? That home is just not a place. That home has an identity. It's a holy place. It's a pure place. It's a place where there's joy and love and peace. You know, we can put the nine pegs of the Holy Spirit in that home and realize there's kindness and goodness and temperance. That's a good word. And temperance and patience. Those two virtues are important for us in the home. So wherever I go, I have to make sure, hey, I have to remember, is this my home? This is where I am. So therefore, there is that reality of how I behave in my home. So I don't behave in one way in St. Augustine. I will not go anywhere. I could, because I'm not there, I could willy willy, I could do what I want and say, no, hold on, hold on. Home is where you act because you are still father. And that brings us into the context of having that kind of environment that continues to foster our development and our character as a father. Hallowed be thy name. And I think every father wants their name, and let me use this common word, respected. But I like to use a better word, honored. We want to be somebody. Hey, who are you talking to like that? Hey, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't know who I is or what? You, you're not, you're in the, hold on. We know who you is. But are you hallowing that name? Oh, no, it's not for me to hallow it. It's for the child to hallow it. But the child can't make your name holy if you're not behaving holy. You see, we can identify with God's holiness and that name is holy because God is holy. So we again, you request I'm pushing you into a place where you have to be conscious of a particular character and personality that makes you that father. So you have to behave holy for that child to call you holy. You have to have that honor for yourself. You have to protect the sanctity of your name. 
And that is by the attributes, whether you are the provider, whether you are the safety keeper, the, the, the protector, the manager, the lawyer, the, whatever, and in the home, whatever role you have, that establishes a particular, I use the word sanity, it makes you who you are, and that is what has to be honored. So therefore, we must make something of ourselves. God is honored because he, he, he is God with several attributes. There's healer, there's provider, comforter. You know, we, we can go on. And all these things, savior, because those nouns are important for a relationship for you to be. So therefore, don't just say, I grew up, or whatever, I, whatever. No, we have to know our purpose because those nouns establish relationship in terms of who you are. That causes our children to say, that's my daddy. They are proud to call you daddy. I heard a story about my own grandfather, when my uncle shared that he, he, because he was an alcoholic, my grandfather was an alcoholic, one day he passed him straight in public, and all his friends said, hey, look at boy, pass you straight. And my uncle said to me, that was the last day my grandfather drank. Because he couldn't understand that his own son disowned him in public. And it was because he was not keeping himself in a way where he could be honored. My uncle said, I couldn't call him daddy on the street when he bebbing and he looking like, oh, he, you know. No, he passed him straight. And for some of us, we say, I can take a drink today. I can smoke a weed here. I can do whatever. No, hold on, hold on. You have sons and daughters looking at you. And you want your name to be hallowed. You want your name to be holy. You want your name to have that honor. Because, you see, in, in, in continuance, we see that you want to give rules. You want to give directions. You want to say you should do this, you should do that. You want to bring the kingdom as it is in heaven to earth. You want to establish vision and purpose. You want to nurture and guide and establish your children. How, how, how? No, when you're absent, when you're lying with the boys too much, I'm not saying don't lie, but you have to have the priority where you are an example so that when you say study, when you say go for a job, when you say buy, when you say be, be a lawyer or be an engineer or be a business person, your words are going to mean something. You don't want your child to say, there he goes again. He could change that just now. He even know what you're talking about. No, no, no. When the Bible says, the kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth. God is very specific about who we are. And how we become that is because God continues to see us in his purpose in our future. Some of us have problems believing that, but that's who he is. And we've got to show our children as fathers that we believe in their future even when we don't see it. And I've had that testimony. But I have had to see one of my son's future even when he wasn't seeing it. And I thank God for that passage, that scripture in Luke 15 that says, and he came to his senses because I kept prophesying, he will be good, he will be, he will be. Even though he caused him trouble, you know, he, he lied with the wrong, I, wrong friends. He, no, I had to remain father and says, the will of God must be done. I'm encouraging you today to prophesy, to say the good words over your children. Don't say bad things. Don't say, oh gosh, I'm sorry I had you. You gave me trouble. We, but look at your own self. You have been redeemed. Where were you as a child? Where were you as a teenager? But today as a father, let's remember the will of your children's future is in your mouth. And therefore that helps us to give us, give the, the daily bread, the providing, the proficiency, you want to make sure there is enough. How? Because you have a responsibility. It's not about the money you have in you. It's the ability to provide. That is important. The ability to provide. Are you responsible with your time? Are we? 
are we responsible with the skills, the talents that God has given us? And that is where our bread and butter comes from. When we show that responsibility in ourselves with the skills, we all have skills. Talents, they're God-given. It's not what you learn in university you know, or in school. It's just natural things that you got from granny and mommy that you learned how to sew, how to, yes, men do sew, how to cook, how to knock, how to do, use your hands, how to think. And we have got to use those natural things before we start using the educated things. Because those educated things have so many philosophies that can trip you up. But when you are doing things with your family, for your children, from your gut, hey, we are bringing them that sustenance that is meaningful. So I don't lack anything. We don't lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Why? Because he leads me very, very humbly. In, as I submit to him, he's able to provide. So today, fathers, don't feel guilty about not having. Don't feel guilty. What you need to do is to get before that mirror and say, I have a skill. Use it. I can plant. I, I can. I cook. I use my skill. I'm a cook. I make jams. I sell jams. You see, you don't have to. I have to use my skill. I can't just use, because, oh, you're educated, Dr. Nice. Hey, hold on, hold on. My father's a Dr. Nice, he's a Kenneth. And we fought, <laughs> my children knew me as Daddy Kenneth. And I have to learn to maintain that understanding of who I am as a person. So don't feel bad about the fact that you may not be educated. Understand that in every man there is a what skill? There's a tell me hello, hello, hello there. Listen to me. Look at the look, look, look at the look at the, the camera. I mean your phone, your tablet, your look there. Every man has a skill. Every man has a talent. And I want you to learn to use that. So forgive yourself for the weaknesses. Forgive yourself and forgive others. Who say that you're not a good father? Who say, forgive those, our debts and our debtors? You, want, you thought it's just money. It's not just about money. It's about the fact that people owe you or don't owe you respect, honor, and they treat you bad. Some people say, oh God, he, he, that child will be like, if I to change that. Let them know, yes, my son, my daughter is going to be like me because I am setting a responsibility understanding that I know the way forward. I am not going to allow the enemy to lead me into temptation. No, no. I'm shunning the very appearance of evil. Deliver me from this evil. Deliver me. You must pray that prayer. Deliver me from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, friends, fathers, mothers, children, all of you hearing, let's begin to honor the father, not just as a man who has established sperm to get children and say he's a man. No, it's not about the propagation. It's about the human development that we bring to each other through the example of God as father to his children. And we will continue because we know, have I not said it? It will come to pass. We have those kinds of scriptures from Numbers. I am not a God who shall lie, or the God who shall repent. Numbers 23. He understands that. Can we say that we are a father who would not lie and who would not repent? God said, I will establish my will and my purpose in you so, so that so I will send you forth. Jesus Christ says, me and my father are one. I, from John chapter 17, I and my father are one. Could you say that, child, that you and your father are one son, daughter? Can you say today that you and your father have a connectivity? I bring to you an example from this passage of Matthew chapter 6, where we can see the character, the very principles of fathering from Jehovah himself. And I trust today that you are able to emulate, you're able to practice this. But before I go any further here, let me say, please, if you're feeling guilty about your fatherhood, if you're feeling that you have not done enough, if you feel that you failed, or if your children say or wives say you failed, don't accept that yet today. No. Say, look, 
have an example. I'm going to make a difference for 2022, 2025, 2030. I am going to make a difference. I'm going to establish a relationship that I have a responsibility to be holy, that you could hallow me. I have a responsibility to give you vision, to nurture you, to establish you. I have a responsibility to provide for you. I have a responsibility to keep forgiveness so that I overcome conflict and I establish proper emotions in my environment. I have a responsibility to resist the temptations, to resist evil. I have a responsibility to stand as a man of God, anointed by the Holy Spirit, to bring life into this world. I have responsibility. Today, the kingdom comes. Yes. How? For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. It's not just to have the glory when the children are getting all A's. No. It's the glory when the children are just saying, Daddy, I love you. And when you say, son and daughter, I love you too. And we can sit down in that rocking chair or sit down on the bed and lie and roll and go down by the beach and go to the movies and go wherever you want when the cool feels broke. Uh, you know, and do things together. Or right now, sit around the table and have dinner together. Play some ball in the yard. When we can do that, yes, we can see the glory. The glory is in the fact that we bring heaven on earth, through the family, through the father, in the home. So be honored today. Know that fatherhood is not just a privilege. It's an honor. It's an established right for anyone who has come into that place to be able to give life to us. And so therefore the earth continues to expand. People are dying, yes, but there are still people being born. Why? Because they're still being fathers. So, what is your confession today? Thy kingdom come? Thy will be done? Yes. I will renew myself. So as we pray now, I pray that you will join with me. And we testify of this greatness. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever Amen. let this be resounding in each home today let there be the glory and the power forever and ever Amen. Let there be transformation in hearts. I pray more so that there be no condemnation in the hearts of our fathers. For some of us who may feel we are not doing the right thing and we have failed our children, I pray today that that condemnation be removed as we forgive ourselves and we forgive those who come against us. We forgive those who owe us and we owe. We forgive so that we free ourselves to go forward in that power and in that glory. Thank you, God, for the understanding that we are not just fathers and in our own home, but we make our home wherever we go to establish, God, that responsibility to ensure that every human being has an example to follow, that they will know the will of God and be able to establish soundness within every environment, that there will be peace and love and joy and goodness wherever we are. Thank you today. Thank you, Father, that we have your provision and you will continue to provide for us as we know that you will not allow us to lack because you are our shepherd. As you and the Jesus and the Father are one, I pray as the Father and Jesus are one, I pray that we will declare oneness in our homes. There will be a renewness. I, I pray a refreshing. I break through the agonies. I break through resistance. I break through condemnation. I break through hate and bitterness today. And I say, Lord, by your spirit, let there be a healing that fathers can say, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let mothers rejoice as their husbands, as their beloved ones, as their significant others, as their children's fathers, 
identify as men in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your blessing for our lessons today. Help us to remember what we have learned today. Please bless us so all the students, teachers, and our family can be protected from the COVID-19 virus. We also thank you for all your work that you have done for us today so we can glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you.